Hey guys, how's it going? So have you been struggling to get what you consider awesome footage with your Mavic Pro? I know I did for a long time. I struggled with the camera, with the gimbal, with the drone. There's just a lot to know there, especially for a beginner. And so over the past 18 months, I've kind of narrowed it down to some of the basic settings that you need to use to get awesome footage with your Mavic Pro. Now I'm not gonna talk about all of the settings that you should use because otherwise this video is gonna get way too long. And so what I'm gonna talk about today is just three things that I use that help me get great footage. So let's get to it. Hey, thanks for stopping by the channel. If this is your first time here, this is 51 Drones and my name is Russ. Consider clicking on the subscribe button and joining us. And also if you get anything out of this video as you're watching it, please click on the thumbs up button as well. Now I get asked quite often, what kind of settings do you use when you fly your Mavic Pro to get awesome video? And the short answer is it really depends on each situation. And the long answer just takes way too long to explain in one video. And so that's why I'm just gonna talk about three of those settings today. And then I'm gonna make some subsequent videos and talk about some of the other settings that are important that you need to know. Now I did a video last year on what are the best settings to use with your Mavic Pro, but the problem is I was pretty inexperienced as far as flying drones and as far as getting aerial video footage. I watched a bunch of videos from people that were considered the experts at the time and I kind of took all those numbers that those people were using and combined them and got an average. And so that probably wasn't the best way to go about it. And so what I've done over the past 18 months and over 300 flights now is I've narrowed it down to some of the most important things that you guys should know. Now I should say right off the bat that this is a personal preference. You know, what looks good to someone else might not look good to you. And you know, it's kind of like picking the best pizza topping. Everyone has a different opinion, but there are some general rules and general guidelines. And so that's what I'm gonna talk about. So the three things I'm gonna discuss today are resolution and frame rate, the style settings, and the white balance. You know, they're all very important when it comes to getting great footage. And the reason I wanted to talk about those first is because when I first started filming with my Mavic Pro, I was filming in 1080p. And 1080p really, is terrible, uh, especially with the Mavic Pro. The bit rate is just not there. Everything just looks awful in 1080p, but I had to shoot in that because my computer at the time was very slow. It was a pretty old computer and I couldn't edit it. It took like four hours to render a five minute 4K video and I just didn't have time for that. So after some convincing of my wife that I needed a new computer for the channel, uh, I can now edit 4K video quite easily. So I actually haven't been recording in 1080p with my Mavic Pro for about eight months. I shoot in 2.7K at 30 frames per second. Now what's considered the best resolution and frame rate to shoot in? Well, if you go by the technical charts, it's 4K at 24 frames per second because that gives you the highest bit rate at just under 60 and also 8.3 million pixels per frame. So technically that's the way to go, but I prefer to shoot in 30 frames per second and then I put it on a 24 frame per second timeline so everything slows down just a little bit and looks a little more cinematic. And then the other reason that I go with 2.7K instead of 4K is just because those 4K files are so huge. They take up so much space on my hard drive and when I compare them side by side, I really can't see any difference, especially on my mobile device, uh, on the iPad, or even on my computer monitor. Now, if I watch them on my big screen on my TV, then I can really see a difference. But for the most part, most people aren't watching YouTube videos on the TV. They're watching them on their mobile device or on their laptop or their computer. And so that's why I go with 2.7K at 30 frames per second. Now, I ran a little test today to see what they would look like side by side, because I've never actually done that before. And so what I did is I put my Mavic Pro up and I set some waypoints and I flew and recorded at 4K at 30 frames per second. And then I flew at 2.7K at 30 frames per second. And as you can see here, side by side, you really can't see any difference, especially if you're watching this on your computer or your mobile device. And so for me personally, that's why I shoot in 2.7K at 30 frames per second, because it keeps the file size down and the quality looks great. Now, the next thing that I wanna talk about is the style settings. You know, this is another thing that's like picking the perfect pizza topping. It's different for everybody. Everybody has a different opinion and everyone thinks something looks great. But for me, what I have found that looks the best is I set the style to custom and I choose a plus one for sharpness, zero for contrast and zero for saturation. And the reason that I do that is because in post-processing, it's really easy to change the saturation level. If you need to turn it up a little bit or turn it down a little bit, it really doesn't take a whole lot of adjusting. And also for the contrast, 
All you have to do is adjust the contrast in post-processing. But when it comes to sharpness, you really need to have that set so when it comes out of the drone, it looks great. Because when you start to introduce artificial sharpness in post-processing, even if you do it right, it still doesn't look very good. And so that's why I usually set it at plus one, zero, and zero. And this is another one of those things where it really depends on the situation. Because if I'm flying like during the golden hour, like sunset or sunrise, and there's a lot of dynamic range, so there's a lot of darks along with a lot of lights. In those situations, what I'll do is I'll adjust the sharpness and the contrast just a little bit until I get some different looks. And then when I get to post-production, I'll just pick the one that looks the best. But otherwise, I just have it set to plus one, zero, and zero. Now, this is another test that I did today, and I did four different settings for style as far as the sharpness. I didn't touch the contrast. I didn't touch the saturation. I only adjusted the sharpness. So I did negative one, I did zero, I did plus one, and plus two. Now, as you can see here, it really doesn't look much different. But one thing you'll notice if you're watching this on a 4K monitor, for instance, you really see that that plus two zero zero setting looks terrible. It's just way too sharp. But honestly, I don't see any difference between plus one, zero, or negative one on sharpness. And the last setting that I'm gonna to talk to you about is white balance. If there's one thing that I want you to get out of this video is don't ever set your white balance to auto. And the reason for that, especially if there's clouds in the sky or something, your white balance is gonna change so much and you're gonna get all kinds of flickering, your color is gonna go up and down, it's just gonna look awful. So this is a good example right now. As I've been doing this video, there's some partly cloudy skies and so sometimes it's sunny, sometimes it's cloudy. And if I had it set to auto white balance, you would see the picture turn from a nice golden yellow into a really cold blue, depending on where the clouds are. And so I set my white balance to custom level and I always have it set to 6500 Kelvin. If you go down to the bottom here, you can choose a custom setting and I shoot it at 6500 all of the time. Once in a while, if I'm shooting on a cloudy day, I'll turn it up a little bit just to add a little more yellow to the picture to make it look a little more warm. But otherwise I have it set to 6500 Kelvin. So that's all I have for this video when it comes to best settings for your Mavic Pro. Like I said, I'm gonna have some future videos that are gonna to touch on some of the other settings, in particular the gimbal settings that I use that have helped me get some nice smooth footage. So if you don't wanna miss any of that, click on that subscribe button if you're not subscribed. Also click on that little gray bell. That's gonna give you a notification when I post a new video. If you did get anything of value out of this, please click on the thumbs up. And if you didn't, you didn't like it for some reason, click on the thumbs down, that's okay. And finally, if you have any questions about what I presented today or any of my settings or anything at all, put those in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I wanna thank you guys for watching today. And as always, fly safe and fly smart.